Hello, and welcome back to New York Penn Station and Amtrak's Moynihan Train Hall. Today we're going to be riding up north with Amtrak's Empire Service from here to Croton Harmon along the coast of the Hudson River. As with our previous trips out of New York, the journey begins at Amtrak's Moynihan Train Hall. Moynihan is still as beautiful as ever, with the gorgeous skylight illuminating the floors below. We've been through here many times in the past, and it's still as incredible as the first time I visited, but there's more to see than just the hall. If you want a more in-depth look at the train hall, then check out one of our previous rides out of New York City. Station information is always close by, with plenty of departure boards located throughout the hall. Amtrak's round of peak departures have passed, which now leaves our train third in line for an on-time departure. Despite our ticket for today being in coach class, we can actually get access to the Metropolitan Lounge via a ticket for a later journey. The rules for accessing Amtrak lounges across the Northeast is that passengers must have same-day first-class or sleeper accommodations, or are a passenger with Amtrak Select Plus or Select Executive Reward status. This means that with our first class of sell a ticket in hand, we can access the lounge ahead of our journey up north. If you missed that ride up to Boston, then I highly recommend checking it out. Links will be in the description or at the end of the video. The Metropolitan Lounge here at Moynihan Train Hall is the newest in Amtrak's roster, and it is by far the nicest across the corridor. There are plenty of places to sit and relax or get some work done, with free Wi-Fi for all passengers, plus a business center with a printer for those still on the job. If the seats inside aren't to your liking, then the lounge offers a balcony overlooking the train hall below. Although the chairs out here aren't that comfortable, it's a great vantage point to see the entirety of the station hall, with passengers moving every which way. One of the best features of the lounge is the full-service bar, which includes plenty of complimentary snacks and drinks. I chose a light breakfast this morning, opting for a chocolate croissant and a cappuccino. It's not a long wait here in the lounge before the boarding announcement is made for our train up to Croton Harmon. Heading back downstairs reveals the massive line for the escalator out to track 5. I knew that today's train was going to be a full one, and with no reserved seating, I chose an alternative route down to track level. Heading down the stairs just beyond the main hall brings us to the West End Concourse, which allows for easy, unobstructed access to track level. Waiting for us on the platform today is our train, Amtrak number 281 to Niagara Falls, headed by GE Genesis P32 ACDM number 715. The P32 ACDM is a derivative of its P42 DC cousin, with the option for dual mode running on AC current, hence the ACDM portion of the name. We'll go into more details on the specifics later in the video, but for now, it's time to head down the train to find a seat. We've got a few minutes before departure as boarding wraps up, so let's take a look at the seating on board. Seating in coach is the same as other trains in the Northeast, which is very comfortable. There's a good 6-8 to eight inches between my knees and the seat back, plus there's extra space beneath the seat to stretch out if you don't have any personal belongings. The seat back pocket is rather large, with enough space for medium-sized personal belongings. The tray table folds down from the seat back and is large enough to store medium-sized laptops and can translate back and forth to the user's liking. Above the seats in each row are two lights activated by the buttons in between. The outlets are located on the walls just below the windows, which again are the only two outlets for the entire row. Seat adjustments are made using the button on the side of the armrests, which reclines the seat back another 20 to 25 degrees. Boarding finally finishes up, and our train departs New York, beginning our 41-minute ride up to Croton Harmon. Most trains out of New York head either east or west, continuing on the northeast corridor, but the Empire Service is one of a few exceptions. 
Instead of following the usual route, the Empire Service takes the Empire Connection around the west side of Manhattan to meet up with Metro North's Hudson Line. From Amtrak's inception in 1971 up to 1991, the Empire Service terminated at Grand Central Terminal. This forced passengers with connections on the Northeast Corridor to make their transfers either on foot or by local transit, which was a massive inconvenience. When the Long Island Railroad built their West End Yard in 1986, a tunnel was constructed under the west side of Manhattan, finally connecting Penn Station to the tracks up north. Services began running to Penn Station in 1991 and have continued ever since. Our train breaks out into daylight just north of 123rd Street, running parallel to the Henry Hudson Parkway and the coast of the Hudson River. As we make our way north out of New York, let's take a look at some stats about our train. Taking us to Croton Harmon today is Amtrak Empire Service number 281, and is powered by GE Genesis P32 ACDM number 715. P32 ACDMs are a variant of the more widely used P42 DC, and are outfitted with equipment for dual mode power. These locomotives can run with the onboard GE7F DL12 diesel engine, or use electric power from the third rail AC pickup on electrified territory. These modes power their electric traction motors, which produce a total of 3,200 horsepower. The combination of dual mode, AC power pickup, and 3,200 horsepower is where these locomotives get their names of P32 ACDM. The Empire Service as a whole runs a total of 460 miles between New York and Niagara Falls. Total travel time between the termini comes in at around 8 hours and 55 minutes, serving 15 stations along the way. Our journey today is not nearly as long, covering a total of 32 miles, with an estimated travel time of around 41 minutes. While we've got a second, why don't you hit that subscribe button? It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. There's a lot more incredible content on the way, including a ride on the Caledonian Sleeper, plus multiple first-class journeys from around the UK, so stick around if you want to see more. The George Washington Bridge is the first major landmark on today's trip. Spanning a total of 4,760 feet, the suspension bridge connects Manhattan with Fort Lee, New Jersey. The massive structure is held aloft by an incredible 105,896 wires divided across the four main cables for a total of 26,474 wires per cable. For a brief period of time between its opening in 1927 and 1931, the bridge held the world record for the longest main span, weighing in at an impressive 3,500 feet. We swap sides with the Hudson Parkway and finally get our first look at the massive Hudson River. Some of you may have been wondering why I chose to skip the line when boarding, and this is it. Window seats fill up fast, and I wanted to make sure I could get a spot on the left side of the train to truly enjoy the beautiful ride. The weather today is perfectly clear, and that high sun illuminates the river and the green hills on the banks beyond. As we pass the southbound train, you can hear the sound of a diesel engine coming from the leading P-32AC. Diesel propulsion is the main source of power for GE locomotives, and as such, it's much easier to run them on diesel. That being said, New York prohibits diesel fumes in their two enclosed termini, so P-32s swap over to electric power when arriving downtown. If Amtrak wanted to, they could run their trains on electric power further north, but would be forced to switch back to diesel north of Croton Harmon, as that's where the electrification ends. Bathrooms are located at the end of each car, with one regular and one accessible. Stepping inside, we can slide the door shut behind us. The bathroom is very clean, and features purple accents along the walls, in addition to what appears to be newer fixtures. The sink works well with plenty of soap and well-stocked paper products. Other amenities include a coat hook by the door, a larger mirror above the sink, and the usual 120-volt outlets. 
Although it's a pretty standard facility, it's clear that this one is well maintained, a statement I wish I could say about all Amtrak bathrooms. The Cuomo Bridge is the second river crossing we'll see on today's travels. With a total length of over three miles, the Cuomo Bridge spans the Tappan Zee, the natural widening of the river north of Yonkers. The current bridge is actually the second to cross the river here, with the first being constructed in 1955 and eventually closed in 2017. The cafe car is located at the rear of today's train, but as with our ride on the Down Easter up in Boston, the cafe car wouldn't open until after our destination. That being said, it's worth taking a look at the options offered on board. Amtrak's Amfleet 1 cafe cars include plenty of booth seats for passengers to dine at, with a serving counter in the middle. The cafe offers a wide variety of snacks and drinks, including a few larger items for more filling meals. There are options for breakfast, lunch and dinner, plus plenty of smaller snacks for intermediate meals. Specifics vary from route to route and have changed recently, with Amtrak revamping the cafe menu to include new meal options, plus price changes on existing choices. Croton Bay makes its first appearance on the horizon, extending out into the river. The tracks soon shift further inland, which marks our final approach into Croton Harmon. Our train slows and rolls to a stop, wherein we can grab our belongings and disembark onto the platforms. It's a quick stop here as there's still plenty of ground to cover before Niagara Falls, and the doors soon close, with train 281 departing not long after. Croton Harmon is a strange station, with a total of four tracks and technically six platforms, though it doesn't seem that the surrounding population of 8,000 people would need so many platforms or so many trains. That being said, this is the northernmost point of Metro North's electrification, with a yard off to the west side of the station, which likely has something to do with it. With our train now departed and our journey complete, we can make our way into and then out of the station building, where we'll end today's video. Next week, we'll be back in Haverhill, Massachusetts to take a ride with MBTA's commuter rail down to Boston's North Station. If you're new around here, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free, and it really helps support the channel. If you liked the video, drop it a like too. Likes help push my content to more awesome viewers like you, and the more people who enjoy the content, the more trips we can take in the future. But anyways, that's all I have for today. Thanks for riding with me, and I'll see you in the next one.